It's time for This Week in WordPress, episode number 228, entitled The Other Nathan Wrigley. It was recorded on Halloween, which is the 31st of October 2022. I'm joined this week by myself, Nathan Wrigley, which is kind of strange. Also by Michelle Frechette, by Daniel Schultzmith and Gabriel Cohen. We're here to talk about WordPress, and we certainly do that. There's a few new modes. There's one new navigation mode for the site editor, which is an interesting interpretation of what WordPress might look like for full site editing in the future. And McCarthy's got a demo of the new distraction-free mode, which will be coming to Gutenberg very, very soon. We talk about the Black Friday deals page that we've got going on. There's a few sponsorship slots left if you fancy it, but it's worth bookmarking for the upcoming madness and also the award ceremony, which we're doing, which is a bit of, bit of fun and a good way of raising money for Big Orange Heart. Christina Diemer did a podcast episode with me this week over on WP Tavern all about how the web is viewed by people with cognitive disabilities. It was really fascinating and opened my eyes a great deal. There is a diversity scholarship for WordCamp Asia, which you may like to apply for. And then there's various other things. We had a submission from Elliot Sowersby. He wants to tell you about his new plugin which enables you to implement Cloudflare's turnstile it's a kind of recapture and he's got a nice free plugin to enable that and then we also get into how pig vomit helped to identify who surrendered a meteor what more could you ask for it's all coming up next on this week in wordpress this episode of the wp builds podcast is brought to you by godaddy pro the home of managed WordPress hosting that includes free domain, SSL, and 24-7 support. Bundle that with the hub by GoDaddy Pro to unlock more free benefits to manage multiple sites in one place, invoice clients, and get 30% off new purchases. Find out more at go.me forward slash WP builds. Hello, hello. <laughs> look at Michelle, or oh, don't look at Michelle. Hello, everybody. That very, very nice to have you with us. Very, very nice to have you with us. It I'm is, already giggling. It's, it's Halloween. <laughs> I don't even know what that means because in the UK it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, you know, some kids go out a bit and sort of knock on doors and things like that. But I know that in the US it's really massive. Uh, so it's it's Halloween anyway. So hopefully we'll bring you some cheer. Um, in a moment, in a moment, Michelle's going to do the big reveal. Normally before yes. the show, <laughs> normally before the show, we have like a <laughs> little bit of a warm up where we talk with each other and discuss what we're going to talk about and so on. And Michelle has refused to you show drum us. Roll. What's drum roll go. A drum roll. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, there's no sound effects. I wish I had a drum roll. That's a shame. Uh, no, but she's not no showing offense. her camera. No uh, offense but, to yeah. Daniel or Gabriel, but could you put just you and me on the screen for a moment, Nathan? Oh, can I do that? Yeah, I think I can. Yeah, I don't okay. know. Let me, yeah, okay. I think so, yeah. All right, How, are you ready? Uh, um, uh, uh. <laughs> 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 oh, Lord, that's so... <laughs> Okay. All right. So anybody who's listening to this will probably know that, I mean, I'm guessing you're trying to be me. You can, you can bring She's... back our other guests though. Michelle's wearing a, Michelle's wearing a gray wig. Uh, and she's, she's sort of like, she's robbed whatever that is to make herself have a bit. Oh, Michelle, it's I think that is really up. funny. Thank you for doing that. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm not going to be able to speak for the next moment or two. I'm going to bring everybody else back in. The other <laughs> <laughs> That's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Uh, no human has ever tried to look like me ever before. I've, Michelle, I've I appreciate that. I've been giggling for two weeks since I thought of this. I have not had a day where I haven't laughed hysterically. I can't even see through these glasses because they're bifocals. 
<laughs> but my other ones That's are too so, early. <laughs> I swear that is absolutely genius. Thank you so much. I appreciate it a lot. Right. All, all, oh, right. Let's see what we got. We've got a few comments coming in. It's time for spooky, spooky WordPress. Hello, WordPress peep, says Rob Cairns. Thank you very much for It doesn't us. get any spookier than me dressed yeah, up as Yeah, and he says that he's dying here. He's obviously enjoying that. That's hysterically funny oh i haven't introduced yeah. everybody i got totally derailed michelle by that let me introduce, I know. Everybody introduce first. our guest introduce okay our let's guest. introduce our guest well first of all i need to introduce um uh, michelle Trichet, aka nathan rigby um <laughs> nathan is the director of community engagement at stella wp at liquid web he's been called the bu- the busiest woman in <laughs> wordpress by matt Modernweg at wordcamp us 2022. In, I'm going to just go normal now. In That's addition okay. to her work at Stella WP, Michelle is the podcast barista at WP Coffee Talk, co-founder of underrepresentedintech.com, creator of WP Career Pages, the president of the board at Word, uh, BigOrangeHeart.org, director of community relations and contributor at poststats.com, co-host of WP Motivate, the lovely new podcast that she's got with Kathy Zant, podcast author, business coach, and frequent organizer and speaker at WordCamp WordPress events. Michelle lives outside Rochester, New York, where she's an avid nature photographer. And you find out more by going to meetmichelle.online. I am not going to get over this. There's no way that I'm not going to be chuckling throughout this episode. More silliness in the world is a good no, thing. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I said I was a bug. <laughs> you said <laughs> yours was close. <laughs> I, I said I'm kind of a bug too. <laughs> <sighs> right. Let's try and let's try and wrangle this back together. Oh, right. First of all, I think you should. Everybody should go and share this. Let's just say that at the start. I, go to already... uh, go to Twitter or Facebook or whatever it is, and share out wpbuilds.com forward slash live. We need more faces in to see the silliness. This is going to be great. Um, okay, so our next guest is Daniel Schultzsmith. Hello, Daniel. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, very nice. From sunny Florida. Okay. We're going to uh, we're going to look at something Daniel created this week and uh, later on in the show. Daniel is the team leader at Pinellas County Government, overseeing all of the public facing websites and interactive experience experiences rather to help the public get the information they need easily and intuitively. When not working, he enjoys giving back his time to the WordPress community at WordCamp, and he's a meetup organizer as well as the producer at the WP Minute. And contributor to post status, busy man. What? What? What's the? the... There's a lot of producers. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> man will come for you. Well, anyway, absolute pleasure to have you with us once yeah, thanks again. Thanks for having me again. You're welcome. And somebody new. We've never had Gabriel Cohen on before, but here, here is Gabriel. Very nice to have you, Gabriel. I apologise, Gabriel. It's not normally this riotous. Um, but... Is a good one to be on, I think. Gabriel is the Vice President of Technology at PMC, where he leads engineering, DevOps, data, and privacy. He has been a user of WordPress since version 1.2. Good grief, wow. Uh, and now runs WordPress for some very recognizable brands, including, wow, Gabriel, Rolling Stone, Billboard, Variety, and The Hollywood Reporter. I confess, I've not heard of The Hollywood Reporter, but the other ones, man alive. Gabriel, it's like royalty on the show today. What's oh. it's it's pretty insane. It's uh, even for for me having been here for a while. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. WordPress one point two. This is yeah, it's fantastic. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. I hope that you uh, enjoy it enough to come back, and you too yeah. could dress up as me if you. Uh, <laughs> If you want that opportunity. <laughs> I'm sensing a theme for the next Halloween. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so typically at the beginning, we just go through a few comments there. Who, what have we got? We've got oh, quite a few. Thank you for uh, mentioning them. Uh, Rob Ken says he's dying. Uh, Peter Ingersoll, thanks for joining us, says that he's uh, he found that hilarious. Dennis from Maine WP says that he, uh, he thinks that's very, very awesome. Uh, this... <laughs> Bob Don, uh, or Bob WP, <laughs> this will haunt my dreams for many nights to come. Man alive, there's no there's no sleep to be had tonight after we've seen this from anybody, is there? <laughs> and a few other people uh, just sort of saying hello and various other things. Jamie, I don't think we've come across Jamie before. It's very nice to uh, to have you from Rockville. What does MD stand for? Which state's that? Maryland. 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 Okay. Okay. Makes makes sense. Uh, hello, Belgrade. Hello from Belgrade, from Maya Longcar. 
And uh, we'll we'll sort of pause it there. This is oh, I've got a pinned message. I don't know what's happened there, but it seems to have a message pinned. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Something on the screen. Paul, did you? Paul Lacey's with us now, and I want to know if he ever dressed up as you when he was your co-host. <laughs> no, he did not. No, and he, he didn't there, commit to the bit. <laughs> there will be a new rule, Michelle, and the new rule will be. Not to, uh, you know, not to dress up as Nathan ever. Can again. I just say it's not easy? It's not easy being Nathan Wrigley. My my head itches like crazy right it's now. It's not easy being me, Michelle. I'm glad that you've discussed. Yes, thank you. It is not easy Wait. being me. I'm going to go off and have a little cry in the corner if that's okay. I just noticed you also have the ponytail there in the back. I do. Yes. Really see on camera. <laughs> Yeah, just like the real thing. Oh, that's yeah, this oh, wig when I when I got it, it I, lo I looked like Gandalf because the like this big white wig. So yeah, I know it's funny tale, just like you. Uh, yeah, the, oh yeah, oh yeah. Anyway, right, let's get on with the WordPress news, shall we? Okay. Um, oh, no, before then, I've got a few little silly things up my sleeve. I might as well just share them with you at the beginning. First off, I don't know if you've noticed, we've um, we've got ourselves a sort of little little background here. We've got ourselves a bit of a bit of a a pumpkin background. Yeah, okay, that's all good. But then I thought to myself, what could I do to make myself a little bit more, I don't know, uh, a bit more pumpkin-y or something like that? So here's here's the first one. <laughs> give me give me give me your marks out of ten. Which one should I stick with? Should we go for the moon throughout this episode? That's kind of, you know, it's all right. What about this one with two hideous looking pumpkins on either side? Mm -hmm. And uh yeah. That what no okay. There's a Too YouTube scary. video we can play in the background, uh, and sometimes it actually brings the ads in as well, <laughs> which is kind of, <laughs> kind of interesting. It'd probably be a Wix ad though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. There was absolutely a Wix ad there, <laughs> which would be really Not funny. Or, or we could go for this other video uh, just here, uh, that one like that. Or just being a little bit cheeky here. I hope nobody takes this in the wrong way. Uh, there's this chap that he honestly he just doesn't leave me alone. This look, he's just pestering me and what are you? What's going on? Oh, there? hello. Who's this fella? Hang on, he's just popped away for a moment. Who's that little chap? <laughs> just there he is. <laughs> Make him go away. <laughs> let's go with the let's go with the YouTube video and hope we don't get a Wix ad at some point during the uh, during the show. Right? Okay. Okay. Go. Okay. Right, let's share the screen and get on with the show properly and talk about WordPressy stuff. First things first, this is us, WP Builds. Uh, if you fancy just subscribing to the stuff that we do, you can fill out this little form just here, and uh, we'll keep you updated on our newsletter when we produce podcast episodes. The, the thing which we've got going on at the moment is we've got this Black Friday deals page where we're starting to list out all of the Halloween, which will probably end by tomorrow, but all of the Black Friday deals. Uh, if you scroll down, we've got these sponsored slots at the top. You can see GoDaddy, WS Form, Stella, and um, Gravity Forms. They're the ones that are sponsored us so far. There's a couple of slots remaining. And then if you go down here, you can click search and you can filter um, and sort of basically find all the WordPress deals. We'd, we tip, we've got quite a few, you know, already. Some of them will run out in the next day or so, but many of them carry on through Black Friday. The URL is tremendously hard to remember. It's wpbuilds.com forward slash black. Uh, let me say that one more time. wpbuilds.com forward slash black. Bookmark it. Might be useful at some point in the future. Also, if you fancy winning an award, I know there's the other awards going on, the actual legitimate awards, which Davinder is running. Well, we're, we're going to run our little rival award. The, the, sort of, the weirdness with this one is that basically if you give 20 bucks to Big Orange Heart, screenshot your donation, then come over here and fill out this form, I will guarantee that you will win a category. Uh, you just have to name your category, and I will 100% guarantee that you're going to win it. Um, and we've got a few in at the moment. We've got the best form plugin that begins with WS. Well, guess who's going to win that? That'll be WS form. The best WordPress CRM named after Groundhog Day. Well, that'll be won by Groundhog CRM. So get yourself involved. It can be found on our website. It's wpbuilds.com forward slash awards. And really, it's just a bit of a gimmick to raise some much-needed finances was, for Big Orange. I was waiting to do mine, but mine is going to be the podcaster that looks the most like Nathan Wrigley. I know, and uh, and the, the the sad thing is, I have to allow you to win it. <laughs> I know, I know. Can, can I, I get can my rival bid in first? <laughs> can, can 
I pay extra to get a photograph in with that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Paul Lacey says, best Nathan Wrigley impersonator <laughs> award. Perfect. Perfect. I like yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, look, here we go. Um, Adam Warner says, <laughs> the other great... <laughs> <laughs> the other Nathan Wrigley. Yeah, like the world needs two. Um, okay, anyway, that's available. Go and make use of it. Right, WordPressy stuff. Let's get on with it. Uh, first things first, WP Tavern. Sarah Gooding wrote a piece on the 25th of October entitled Gutenberg Cont- Contributors Explore a New Browse Mode for Navigating the Site Editor. I don't know what your thoughts are, Gabriel, Michelle, and, um, well, all three of you, let's just say that. Uh, I-, I just think it's getting to be a bit cluttered um, the, there's so many different modes, there's so many different places where the UI uh, is, can be, especially with full site editing thrown into the mix, it feels like there's a, a million different places. And for me, at least, I think we probably need to put the brakes on a little bit and try to figure out what this whole thing should look like. I'm not saying it's not usable. I totally think it is, but I think it probably could be easier. You know, if we took a, a leaf out of successful things like Elementor, where everything's, you know, the UI really hasn't changed that much over the time because they kind of hit it out the park first time. But one thing that's being mooted, and it's not necessarily going to happen, is the idea of this new browse mode. There's a little video here, which might give you a better indication. If you're watching it, uh, rather than listening to it, essentially you can see what's going on, but there's a there's a panel on the left-hand side. You click the design menu, and you can decide what you want to edit. You can you know pick a particular page, or you could p- pick a particular post type, and ha- what have you. And then you enter into the the editing of that, and then when you're done, you you sort of save it away, and it goes kind of full screen, so that there's less distraction. Personally, I think this has got a got legs. I really like the idea of a menu down the left-hand side where everything lives. That seems like a sort of sensible approach to me rather than having it in sort of like pop-up bits, pieces all over the place. But uh, yeah, curious as to what you guys think. What do you make of this? Uh, my, my my take is, that, I mean, it's good for the future for sure. Um, where I get uh, wondering about things is that we're like we're like double menuing things. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we have the, the normal WordPress... Yeah admin menu that's in a little bit further and a little bit more condensed uh and then we have this menu which i love which this menu could take over for that and that'd be awesome but the separation of the two is what i always see you know at least folks on my end getting confused that is you're going from one menu to a completely different looking menu um so yeah i'm i hope they keep evolving it i think it, it has legs for sure to keep going if you had to if you had to pick this width that we're looking at on the screen, which is, I would say it's roughly 2x the the normal admin menu in WordPress. Would you prefer a wide menu like that, or would you prefer to stick with the the narrower one that we've got? Um, on this one, I don't, uh, from what I remember, I can't actually move it, like yeah. the, the distance of it. So I prefer yep. one where we can actually move it. That's oh, okay. So you could you know? resize it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That yep. makes sense. Yeah. Yep. I, um, I kind of feel that the, the admin UI, that the menu down the left-hand side was, was probably a, a, a really good size when screen real estate was a big issue, but now it yeah. feels like everybody's got a monitor which is significantly bigger than it was five, six, seven, eight years ago. And something like this, which is big, because you, I don't know, it just gives it a bit of space to breathe. The, the menu items in this particular video, you know, they're not crowded out by anything else. But yeah, that's a good point. Thank you, Daniel. Um, Gabriel or Michelle or Nathan? Yeah, my, honestly, my thoughts are very similar to to Daniel's. Like. It's uh, it is a pretty cool view. I could see it being useful to a lot of people. Um, you know, for for our sites, I don't know how much use it would necessarily get. So you know, I, I, that's one thing that I like about a lot of new features that get introduced to WordPress like this, where you're able to at least filter them out if you're uh, if you're never going to touch it. Um, but you know, the the risk to me is like there's just so many ways to get to all of these little pockets and you're kind of in half leg in one world and half in the other. And that gets a little weird and confusing. Yeah, I would, I would completely agree. Michelle, what about you? Um, I won't use it, but I just, I'm kind of stuck in the way that I learn things and I stick with the old ways. And the only place that I really struggle with the UI is on mobile. 
um, when I'm trying to troubleshoot something and I'm not near a computer. So I don't know what this looks like on mobile, but I would think it would feel like a nightmare to me because I couldn't access the menu very easily. Interesting point. point. Yeah, that is a good point. I, by the way, Michelle, I literally cannot watch your video. <laughs> it's just cracking me up. She's really named herself Sorry. on the screen, the other Nathan Wrigley. I'm, I'm, Put her up on the side. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we we'll just we we'll just mute. <laughs> Is there any way to kind of freeze it, or, or just actually put an old picture, you know, a traditional Michelle on the screen? No, I don't think so. Okay, so it, it's an interesting better? concept. I I would really love it though if if we could decide on a thing. To me, this mm -hmm. feels like a good thing. I like the look of it. I like the width of it. I like the space of it. I like all of it. But I do wish that all the heads would collide and we'd just get one thing which we could then uh yeah i think one of the things that we need to remember though nathan is that everybody who's using wordpress isn't coming from the same user experience that's a good point and the same you know the same user needs and so for some people this you know if you're if if you're a blogger and that is what your entire site is dedicated towards something like this would be much easier to use than or maybe much more geared towards you than somebody who's building an e-commerce site, for example. So I think that it's it really brings into the fact that we're trying to reach more people and make WordPress more accessible based on needs. Yeah, yeah. It looks, looks nice to me. We'll see. Let's see where it goes. But it, very much at the moment, it's not uh, mooted to be a thing. It's just, here's, a, here's an idea. Let's see what, what comes of it. Uh, however, this is going to be a thing. Let me just pop the screen back on. This is a video. Um, so I'll, I probably will just play the video if that's all right. And it's, um, it's Anne McCarthy, who has been on the show several times. And uh, we all know what Anne's busy doing. She's working with um, Automatic. She's seconded out and she's helping build out Gutenberg and full site editing and all of these kind of things. And she got so excited by something that she saw that's coming out in the next version of, of Gutenberg. I believe it's 14.1, but I could be wrong about that. And it's called distraction free mode. And she shot a video and I really like it. I've got to say it's pretty, you know, it's, it, there's not sort of great grandstanding about it, but essentially if you look at the moment, you're looking at a typical WordPress install, she's got content, which she can edit on the screen, the menu on the right, the menu at the top. And what she does is she clicks on the menu at the right. And you can see on the screen, there's this thing called distraction free mode. This is the new thing. And once you click on that, every bit of the UI disappears. And by that, I mean, literally all of it. So that's it. You, if you start to edit the text, you don't get any um, options. There's no kind of like left align, right align, bold, italic, nothing. It's just distraction free. And then if you wish to come out of that mode or you wish to interact and edit things in a different way, what you do is you hover your mouse towards the top of the screen and um, and it comes back, but you have to hover at the top. Again, I've no idea how this would behave on mobile. But I like to write um, in an environment like that. The, the Mac apps that I've got and things like that <clears throat> uh, that I use for writing, I always choose to make everything go away if I possibly can. I would imagine there'll be a subset of people who would find this uh, incredibly useful. But Michelle, a.k.a. Nathan, you, uh, you said you wouldn't be using anything like this. You, it's not of interest to you. No, I usually either write directly, and I'm just so used to the, I don't, it's not a distraction to me to have everything else kind of on the screen. But the other thing is I tend to write um, in a Google Doc first and then just kind of paste it into WordPress. And so. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair enough. And uh, you know, when you're using, when you're using Google Docs and you're using the markup there, then it, it translates like it should. So I've never is had that, problems with H's and I, I've never experienced that yeah. joy. I know it's supposed to do that, but every time, and I do it on a regular basis. I do it at least once every two weeks. I copy and paste a Google Doc because um, David Wormsley and I, we do the podcast every two weeks together and he, he helps mm -hmm. me with the show notes and we collaborate in Google Docs. And it's always a hot mess when I copy and paste mm -hmm. it. So I don't know what we're doing wrong. All the headings are exactly as they should be, but I have to go through it line by line and correct correct the mistakes. So maybe oh, it's some weirdness going on that I've got on my site and nobody else has experienced well, it, but it's hard. I'll, I'll probably have those same problems today since I'm dressed as you. <laughs> nice. Uh, what do you think, Daniel? What do you think, Gabriel? The, you think you'll... the one thing, I, so you said we can't make things like bold or italic when we're doing this? 
Uh, that Sorry. that's the impression I got from watching it. If yeah. you if you watch, uh, so I'll just scan to a bit of the video. If you like, when she's so here, for example, she's yeah. in the middle of typing, uh, sh and you can see there's nothing. There's no there's not there's no way at all to sort of. It. I don't know what would happen if she highlighted the text. Maybe something would. It's like the it's like the Hemingway way of you just keep writing it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Um, yeah. But I guess uh, if you're if you're like an author or something, it might be good to have that distraction-free approach. But yeah, sorry, I interrupted. Distraction-free yeah. modes, they distract me ironically. <laughs> and I'm not even saying that to be funny, but like the the lack of kind of Chrome and UI just it freaks me out. Like I don't know what to do. I panic. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, but the fact that it exists, like I do know people who who like full screen editing experiences and it's like okay it's harmless to to have that feature so um adam in the comments makes the point that he thought that this was already a thing and i think one of you before we clicked yeah. go was yeah. you, daniel you said that uh oh crikey look we've run out of video <laughs> and uh, we now got some yeah we definitely had distraction free before but i think yeah were pointing out there was still some user interface around it. Right. Yeah. It was the top toolbar, wasn't it? You could put that in, but this really is like a, another step into the dark. Um, Courtney, ha as always, is mine of knowledge. Thank you. She says she thinks shortcuts will still work, uh, mm. but no toolbars display. Hey, it'll it'll okay. get people to, to figure out shortcuts very Learn the keyboard shortcuts. Yeah. And there's a lot of them. Um, and Adam wants to know. So, Courtney, this is I'm batting this straight back to you. Is there a keyboard shortcut for activating distraction mode? I wonder. I don't I actually. There, there was on the thing. Was there? There was a yeah, little keyboard was showing shortcut. it next to yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so you could just toggle it on and off as you please. I mean, it yeah. really does feel for to me like people who are doing long form writing who are sitting down for you know to do something for a good hour, two hours, and they just don't want to to get distracted by things. But anyway, it's coming to a WordPress near you fairly soon. Uh, Gutenberg 14.1, I think. Um, but you can try it out if you like by downloading the Gutenberg plugin. Uh, right, so this, uh, this, let me just pop it on the screen. There we go. Again, we're back on the tavern, Sarah Gooding writing. I don't know what you, I don't know if we'll dwell on this for particularly long. But the Web Almanac produced this giant report every so often. I believe it's, is it every year? I'm not sure if it's annual or biannual. But it's huge. It's like 700 plus pages of data all about the state of the web. And, um, you know, it's absolutely massive. One of the subsets of, of, that they deal with uh, is CMSs. We talked about the, the stuff about the growth of WordPress and so on and so forth in the way that we have done in the past. But one of the things that Sarah picked up out of the report, which I didn't pick up on, I confess, is that it would appear that a lot of WordPress websites are are losing out on search engine rankings because their their images are lady lady loading. That's a new thing. Uh, lazy loading in a in a in a way which doesn't um, doesn't conform well to Google standards. You know, we've got Core Web Vitals and things like LCP Last Contentful Paint and Vanilla WordPress should handle this pretty well. Uh, there was a bit of a bother at one point where everything got lazy loaded, which didn't work so well. So now Gutenberg has these, sorry, um, Word, WordPress has these heuristics which try to figure out, is should this image be loaded right at the beginning in order to get on the page ASAP? Uh, but it would appear that we've got a bit of a mismatch in that loads of plugins would be this, are affecting the way that this is working and incorrectly um, tagging things so that they don't get loaded, so that they load later, and then it screws up your search rankings. So anyway, I just thought that was interesting, and I thought I'd raise it. I don't know if you've come across this before. No, I mean, it I, sounds like it was originally a core issue, but now they're saying it's still showing up for some reason, and it seems that they think it could be plugins that are doing that. Mm, um, yeah. But you know, it was fixed in 5.9, from what I understand. 5.9, you're right. There it is, yep. So I also wonder in the cross section of, like, how many folks are still on 5.9 that account for that 54% yeah. they're saying that are still Yeah, doing that's it. a good point. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it says, prior to WordPress 5.9, WordPress default of lazy loading implement implementation was causing LCP performance slower. LCP performance. So it was fixed, uh, shipped with a fix in 5.9, but then it would appear that plugins... 
So, I mean, we've, I imagine at some point most of us have come across a plugin which handles things like this. You know, you might get some sort of image smushing plugin which carts the images off to your CDN or something like that. And then it's going to be loading them from different places and maybe it's loading them a bit, it's putting the LC, sorry, the, yeah, the LCP tag on um, in an inappropriate way. So just something to be mindful of, really. If you've got an, a, a web page and you notice that that is failing on your, sort of lighthouse scores and things, it's probably worth looking at. Gabriel, anything? Should we move on? Yeah, I, I found this one really interesting. Um, like, it's hard for me to imagine how lazy loading would be impacting something that would affect LCP unless it's doing something horribly wrong, in which case, you know, it doesn't really seem like a, uh, I don't know how to put it, a WordPress core issue unless it's WordPress core causing the bug. <laughs> yeah. Um, which, uh, and but also even even if you're, you know, like the 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 main thing that would be lazy loading on a on any given page would probably be the primary. Well, sorry, I'm saying this backwards. Um, you know, when you're loading an article or loading a, a home page or something like that, you know, your your largest contentful page is usually going to be something that's above the fold, like your primary image on there or something like that. Um, so to have that affected by lazy loading seems like either something's wrong with the structure of the site, um, which is kind of a good thing to flag, but a you know error that points you in the wrong direction because the error is pointing you towards you know uh, something that might be happening to to your primary content, but maybe it's in your secondary content and it's not very obvious by just going like oh large contentful paint here's the biggest element on the page, you know that looks like it's okay, so. Uh, I, I don't know. I I found this one really interesting just for that regard. Like it, it almost seems like a red herring in some ways, mm -hmm. uh, but it definitely made me want to kind of learn a little bit more about, um, you know, what, what they might be seeing in, uh, in their raw data um, yeah. in this direction. Well, there's certainly a lot of uh, information. The the page the page that you can go to is almanac.httparchive.org, and uh, you're looking for 2022. It's absolutely massive. It really does cover absolutely everything. It, it paints a very rosy picture for WordPress in general, but obviously this is one sort of minor little tweak that needs to be fixed. And I'm guessing that the the clients that you're dealing with, Gabriel, you know, they they want things to be a hundred percent perfect. Um, you know, the likes of Rolling Stone and Billboard and all those publications. Our sites, they're, they're not 100% perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. Oh, that's great. You're just like the Everyone rest of thinks. us. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. I feel, I feel much better already. Uh, okay, okay. Interesting. I just wanted, to, uh, just wanted to mention that this is my favorite article because I am a WordPress bug. Oh. <laughs> Um, if you're listening to 100%. this and not watching it, uh, Daniel has put like I don't know what that is, metal straws, translucent his... stream metal straws, translucent <laughs> metal. He's really yeah, he's gone for it. Uh, translucent metal straws to make himself look like a bog. Perfect. He's got antenna. Antennae. Yeah, yeah. Next yeah. week I'm going to be dressing up as Daniel, and then halfway through the show I will change to Michelle. Uh, I'll just have one of those like. I've, Outfits I can just rip off and beneath all the. I want to uh, see you in purple hair. I yeah. Mm, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe maybe I've overcommitted. Uh, show, uh, Bob. By the way, every week we do we we find the title from what we've said during the episode, and it becomes the show title. So Rob's saying the show title this week has got to be the other Nathan Wrigley. Okay, we'll stick with that unless something Wait, else comes. I, com I committed so much. I wore a T-shirt for you. Like I wore. Uh, nice. An industry T-shirt. Oh. I don't wear T-shirts. Oh, I didn't know that you. Are. Yeah, but yeah. look, you're missing the card, the matching cardi, Michelle. Didn't I do know. quite enough I research. I didn't realize. Oh. <laughs> very, very much appreciate. It's it. I'll never get over this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To, to be fair, the last time I spent time with you was in Southern California. Yes, was I was in a T-shirt only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, right. Let's move on. The next piece. Uh, do you know what this? There's a there's some episodes of podcasts that I record, and sorry, this isn't supposed to be a self promotional piece. It was just I recorded it. It came out this week, and so I'm mentioning it because of the issue that it touches. Uh, it's an episode for the Tavern. It's called uh, Christina Dima on making digital content usable for people with cognitive disabilities, 
And this was one of those moments where you realize how utterly, utterly, uh, what's the word? How ill-educated you are. Because Christina in this episode, I believe it's probably about 40 minutes long, something like that. She schooled me for that whole entire time. She told me about things that people experience on the web. And I just didn't know. I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with the normal, um, the sort of screen reader scenarios and things like that. But she, she goes into all sorts of ways that people with all sorts of different cognitive disabilities are impacted on the web. So one of the things that she mentions quite, quite freely is her autism. She had late diagnosis of autism. And she finds that certain things on the web make it more or less unusable for her. So that's visual, she described. If things flash or flicker, to you or me, it's a, perhaps an annoyance to Christina, it's like, no, I cannot look at that, which I found fascinating. I didn't know that that was a thing. And then she mentions not just um, autism, she mentions a whole tranche of different things that people have to contend with. And so it's just a really fascinating episode. The, the long and the short of it is, it's there's more to accessibility, I'm going to put it under that umbrella, than uh, screen readers and people who have uh, sight impairment. So it was just a really, really interesting read. Uh, sorry, interesting listen. I don't suppose the three of you had a chance to listen to it. I don't know, but it was really interesting. And I know this is right in your wheelhouse, Michelle. So I just thought yeah. I'll hand it over and see if anybody has any thoughts on this. I think it's so important that we remember that every, that who we design for, who we're creating websites for, isn't just like us. And that we that there's a, a huge wider audience out there, and that if we want them to consume our content, to buy our products or our services, we need to make sure that our sites are fully accessible for those people who, for whom there are other issues than what we face ourselves. So as I've gotten older, I've discovered I don't like gray print. I don't like tiny print on a website um, because I've got my bifocals on and I'm leaning in like that old lady on that one meme, you know, that's like can't see anything. Um, and that's just because of age, right? So there's so many more things to consider. I, I'm, I'm thinking about what Christina might have thought about Flash. Remember when Flash was a thing and every site started with this big old like whatever. And marquees that scroll and all of those other, you know, problematic things that that we've had over the years, Parallax. Parallax came and left. Remember, Parallax was like, ooh, cool, we can scroll over images. And I don't see that on any sites anymore unless they're, you know, two or three years old. So it's very important to remember that there's a wider audience than than what we're thinking of when we design. Yeah. And to me, one of the things that I had to clarify right at the outset was, could you just please tell me what cognitive disabilities uh, actually, what does that phrase even mean? Because in in my mind, I've got a, a rough idea of what that might have meant. It turns out it was totally, I mean, I had this tiny little target and it turns out that the bullseye was a whole lot bigger. There was so much more in it. You know, so she mentioned mm -hmm. her own autism. She mentioned people who, the, the web is just very confusing, you know, choices that to me seem straightforward. Um, and the paths that, especially in things like e-commerce, where you go down a path and then you get the upsell and the, the, the subsequent downsell and all of these kind of things, to me, mm -hmm. it, it can be a bit irritating and a bit boring to go through that process. But it's not it, it's not an impediment to carrying right. it out. It's just I have to go through, jump over the, the hurdles. Mm -hmm. Whereas the description that she offered was that some people, this is, this is a complete no entry sign. You know, as soon as they hit those hurdles, that's it. It's like I'm, I'm backing out. So please go and have a listen. It was really interesting. Uh, Daniel, and Gabriel, I'm yeah. sorry we've cut you out, but join I, in. I had seen her uh, presentation at WordCamp US and uh, caught myself nodding my head a lot because mm. she was also talking a bit about the way we write for the web and being able to make it so that, that people can be able to really understand what you're, what you're talking about, removing jargon, all those things. Um, and that's what we did at Pinellas County Government is it, it's taken us almost two years to do a website redesign, but the bulk of it wasn't in design and development. It was actually rewriting content and, you know, making that content up to date so that it could be at like a seventh or eighth grade reading level, basically, and pass different uh -huh. accessibility checks. Okay, so, right. Yeah. We, and remove jargon. Daniel, we had, uh, I, da Daniel wanted to, um, and I'm very happy to, to show the, the website that he's been working on. Can we, can we? Uh, just go through a little bit of what you just mentioned. Uh, so yeah. this is the, the website. It's, co it's called 
how do you say that word? Is it uh, Pinellas County or Pinellas sometimes County. locals say Pinellas? Yeah, that, that <laughs> was where I was going. So Pinellas.gov. So P-I-N-E-L-L-A-S.gov. This is hot off the press, right? You re- you launched this earlier in the yeah, week? Last, just, yeah, last weekend, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. Yep. Okay. So mm-hmm. could you describe some of the little bits and pieces that, 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 that Christina in that podcast episode would have been talking about? You, yeah, so... you modified like the, the, the way that you wrote, you described? Yep, the way that all the, the different pages are written um, are written for a lower grade level, basically. So, you know, we found a lot of our pages were coming up under like a collegiate uh, type of writing. And so, you know, immediately you're alienating folks that are trying to get to the information, trying to digest it quickly. And so in government, too, people usually just want to use a service. They want to get in, get out. They don't want to sit on these pages and read an essay about something. <laughs> so it's really just, you know, redefining those things for them. Um, the other key thing is there's no animation on this site. We're not using, we're not loading things in or flying things around. There is like a little help you thing screen that comes in the bottom left that you'll notice. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's the only piece that's like, you know, might be a little bit distracting to someone. Uh, and that's all consciously on purpose, you know, um, same thing with videos, videos aren't auto load. You have to click on it to actually load them. Um, so it's all, all, you know, completely done on purpose so that we wouldn't uh, be distracting folks. Yeah. So the, the, I think it is a tendency, isn't it, for people who write is that they want their language to be uh, potentially flowery. And, and sometimes I, I get the impression, you know, there's a little bit of how well can I, almost like I, I want this to be poetic and really brilliant and I want to use lots of complicated uh, words and so on. But that was the antithesis. <laughs> there you go. I yeah. just used the word antithesis. Um, <laughs> that, that was the opposite here. You, you really tried to yeah. keep the language as plain and simple as possible. In the podcast episode, this doesn't mean much to me because I don't know what 10th grade means. But oh, right. Christina, Christina uh, said... School. Okay. Middle school level. Okay. She said that that's where she would prefer website text was pitched at. Um, oh, 10th grade. Right. That's, that seems to be what was in my memory there. But the, yeah, the for, point being, don't go for like university level, uh, you know, lots of crazy synonyms for things which can be described in much more easy, less flowery language. Yeah. WCAG says, I'm pretty sure it said somewhere in there, it's like an eighth or ninth grade, somewhere in there, but. Um, uh, you, I could be lower. misremembering that, easily misremembering that, yeah. Um, yeah, she mentioned autoplay of videos was a complete no-no. Uh, that really does yeah. you know, cause the web to be a horrific experience for lots of people. But another thing uh, that she mentioned was that the, the guidelines, the guidance around this topic, um, they're really not sort of firmed up yet. She said they're getting... Uh, more firmed up, uh, firmed up. She says, cognitive disabilities are amongst the most prevalent types of disabilities, yet experts have struggled to provide web accessibility best practices around this area due to cognitive disabilities being such a broad category. However, recent work by standards groups has begun to address this deficiency, and then I've linked to them at the bottom of the post. So if you are designing, well, especially in Daniel's case, where you're designing a public utility kind of website, I'm guessing that you don't really get a choice about whether you do this or not. You've just got to. Uh, you've mm-hmm. got to give that a bit of thought. Um, Gabriel. One of the things that, that I love about Christina's talks about uh, uh, accessibility and, and how to make your sites better for users is she really does a good job of drawing a line between like useful features and useful ways of using things um, that are also accessible to a wide broad you know group of people, and that also you know, makes it a little bit clearer that like, there's a lot of people with a lot of different types of, of disabilities. Um, and, uh, you know, and kind of to your, to your earlier point, Nathan, it's like, it's not something that you think of every day, like you think of, you know, someone in a wheelchair or someone who can't see or someone who can't hear. Um, but then it's broader than that. Uh, and I don't know, I, I feel like accessibility in general needs a, a better PR campaign. Because when you really dig into like all of the things that make a site more accessible and better for for folks with disabilities, it's better for everyone. It's a better user experience. It's Absolutely. You know, better for people who might have broken their wrist or just someone who's, as you were saying, Daniel, who's just trying to get in skim information. Um, mm-hmm. And it feels yeah. like we're, by calling it accessibility or by like saying, you know, if it needs to be with WCAG standards or whatever, you know, it almost gets to this point of like being other. Um, rather than just being something to make websites better. 
And mm-hmm. I think it makes what developers don't realize a lot too is I think it actually makes development easier <laughs> because <Yeah. laughs> there's really defined things that you know how you're supposed to actually write, you know, that, that piece of code. So. Did you have, Daniel, for this particular website, did you have any, so I'll just pop it back on the screen. Did you have any um, sort of legal hoops to jump through? In other words, did you have to prove that you've done certain things or was there, you know, some some metric by which it was judged as, yeah, that's complete in as much as we can be complete? Yeah, I mean, the measurements on, it's WCAG um, AA. The measurements on that yep. is really... Like some of them will, some tools will say it one way, some tools will do it another way. So what we did is take the difference between a few different tools. So like we looked okay. at Axe, we looked at AIM, which is another one, uh, yeah. and Site Improve, um, and then just keep evolving from there. So so yeah. we're up at least to you know WCAG two, the WCAG double A. Um, you know the the holy grail would be triple A, but almost no one gets that because of different things that are already being brought on there, different types of scripts and stuff. Mm, yeah. Okay. That's really interesting. So it's uh, Pineas, uh, gov, dot gov. Um I'll put the link in the show notes uh, when we put this out tomorrow. Yeah. Fascinating. And how was it built, Daniel? Did, dare I ask? What was the um, what was the, the underlying structure? Are you custom theme? Are you using blocks here? What's going on? Yep. It's a custom theme um, built off of. Uh, oh gosh, it's called Pico Strap now. It's like a bootstrap derivative. Um, but uh, everything, all the content is just blocks. So most of it's core blocks that we've we've really just reskinned with CSS uh, and a few custom blocks as well. Mm-hmm. Nice, well done. Anyway, bravo! Yeah, good, good job. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's really nice, isn't it? Isn't it just? Mm. Yeah, really it really nice. is. Yeah. Uh, okay, we'll we'll move on. So next one is uh, just want to give a bit of a, a hat tip. If you're thinking of going to WordCamp Asia, the first WordCamp Asia, we're so close to having the first WordCamp Asia. Yeah. And then Mr. Naughty COVID got in the way and it all got mothballed. Yeah. But it's happening again, 17th to the 19th of February 2023. And there is a, I don't know what the right word is, whether it's scholarship, I think is the word. Oh, yeah, it says, there we go. Uh, there is a WordCamp Asia diversity scholarship which is available to apply for. And I'll just quote, in an effort to realize WordCamp Asia's vision, we've collaborated with WordCamp Central to bring the WordCamp Asia Diversity Scholarship. Um, The aim is to make the event truly a welcome experience. And who qualifies? The scholarship will be awarded to someone who, and I don't know if it has to tick all of these boxes, boxes is an active WordPress contributor, project contributor, has never attended any flagship word camps before. And by that, I think they mean US and Europe, uh, requires financial assistance to attend, is part of the underrepresented demography uh, of open source contributors and is interested in bringing their experience to grow their local WordPress community. So I'm guessing if you satisfy all of that, there's a bonus point. It says if you can share your contributor story. Uh, it'll help us to mm-hmm. understand. I don't know exactly what uh, what's on offer in terms of dollars, you know, amount of money or whether or not they just book your hotel for you and get your plane ticket for it. Not sure. But if you uh, if you know somebody who would desperately love to go and satisfies all of those criteria, you can go to asia.wordcamp.org and uh, uh, click around. But I'll put the link in the show notes. So more, more important stuff. Very nice. I love it. If you yeah. and if you read at the bottom of that list, it does say for more information, you can see what WordCamp US has done with the Kim Parcell Memorial Scholarship. The difference being that this is open to um, any gender as opposed to women and non-binary. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I didn't notice that, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the Kim Parcell Memorial Scholarship. All right. Okay, so that's that. Right, so just in a spirit of being a bit fun this week, I decided to uh, to put out a tweet, and I don't want to dwell on this particularly too much, but I thought this is quite nice. Uh, every so often, I get very uh, I get I get very heartened by the WordPress community. I kind of love it. I love their you know the the way that mm-hmm. we're generally speaking, we don't have too many battles. Although sadly, there was a piece which came out which I'm not going to cover this week because I only just found out about it, where that really really wasn't the case more on that next week but uh, i put out a a tweet it was a bit of a silly tweet and i said sim silly question 
uh, who, and it's got to be a singular person. Sorry, Taco. He he thought that was uh, he thought only one person was a bit ridiculous. He wanted like dozens of people. Uh, who in the WordPress space over the last decade, yes, ten years, I said, has inspired, interested, encouraged, fascinated you most? Um, it's kind of like the Wayback Machine, I said. And I was really chuffed to bits. There was absolutely loads of people who chimed in and just said nice things about each other. And Michelle, I noticed your name got swept into this. Somebody, I can't remember it was who it was, sweet. said that, said that you were there. Sarkar in India, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. really nice. Anyway, if you want to, I'll put the link to that tweet in the show notes. I just thought it was a nice way of, you never know, it's just... Very sweet. Michelle, how did you feel on the back end of somebody that you didn't anticipate was going to do that, doing that? It must have made you feel pretty nice, right? It made me smile for sure. It was very, very heartwarming. It made me feel good. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll link to that. Uh, I didn't get a mention, sadly. (sighs) Little little (laughs) violin. At least I don't think I did. Uh, But you can now go for the alternative. You can do my doppelganger if you wish. Right. Next thing. (laughs) Quick deal. Um... We mentioned this last week, but I, I'm going to keep mentioning it because I think it's quite a good one. Uh, Ninja Tables, if you want to get this, they've got a lifetime deal at the moment. I'm not going to dwell too much on what the plugin does. It displays tables, but it displays fairly complicated tables, and it can do things like uh, stop, consume ACF fields. You can even display stuff that's from a Google Sheet, so you can just put stuff in a Google Sheet, and it'll create a nice-looking table on your website. The reason I'm saying it is because they've got a lifetime deal. Uh, it's one of these ones, and having... Bought one of their lifetime deals in the past from these guys. That I, I actually think it's uh, you know something they do support. They keep updating it. I've got the Fluent Forms one, and they do keep updating it. So anyway, there you go. It's on offer. Uh, it's ninjatables.com forward slash discount dash deal. Uh, yeah, that's right. You know, why are tables so difficult always? I don't know. <laughs> I'm being true. They are. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> yeah. We started by making, you know, our layouts with tables years ago, but now. Do you remember that? Do you, oh, yeah. were you part of that? Oh, yeah. Hot I was mess? Part of that. Oh, I was so glad when somebody said to me, no, no, you got your CSS now. I was like, what is, what is this voodoo? And then displayed yeah. how you could separate everything out. And yeah, tables was horrible. Um, and then you had beautiful things like Internet Explorer 5. And six, which just <laughs> did whatever they wanted with everything on the website. Yeah, it's kind of nice though. It, it, there's a, there's a demo section on this website where it shows you the power of what it can do. And cool. one of the nice implementations is you can make a like a shopping cart almost, not a shopping cart. Mm. You can make like a a shopping experience where you can list all of your products and you can add them into the cart by by um, you know you could add five of one particular item and two of another, and it'll stick it into your WooCommerce website. It's powerful. It's really good. So I think worth nice. worth looking at. Nice. Um, Peter Ingersoll, sorry, missed your comment there, Peter. He said, exactly. I don't know what bit of the conversation we were at at that point. It would be great if UX tied to accessibility was part of something oh, yeah. like Web Vitals. With this, sc- Oh, that is interesting. Where sc- a score where folks are ab- obsessively yeah. focused on trying for a hundred <gasps> site site improved does something like that they have a zero to 100 but um but you know it's a closed like same improve you got to get a pretty expensive license to use that stuff okay yeah so this, uh, comes, this comment i 100 percent agree <laughs> with it but it also frustrates me because there is a lighthouse score for accessibility but again like it like it it's a separate oh. bucket and it's like you know i would go the the entire way peter i would like make the accessibility score a set of individual scores that are part of, you know, the main score, for example, rather than being in a separate bucket altogether. Yeah. And rather than being in a bucket called accessibility. So, so your, your, int- your intent there, um, Gabriel, would be that it was all rolled up into one and all of the bits and pieces that we're now worrying about with Core Web Vitals, it was just sort of thrown into there and it affected your search engine results in a really visible, highly obvious way. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, I, you know, that is such an interesting idea. Thank you, Peter. I don't mm-hmm. know why I hadn't thought of that before. And also, uh, Gabriel, I, I confess I didn't even know it was buried in there. Whereabouts do we find that? Is it part of, um, is it buried in Chrome somewhere or a Chrome-based um, browser? Yeah, I just, uh, I don't know all the different ways you can see it, but if you're running a, uh, a Lathouse test um, in Chrome uh, within the browser DevTools, 
um, you know, right after you run it, you'll get kind of a, at the very top, you get a summary of like, you know, four different scores. And one is your performance score, one's SEO, one's accessibility. Uh, and I can't remember the fourth one. <laughs> I, I feel that the, I don't normally like the expression ambulance chasing, but you know that kind of thing where lawyers go after uh, the low-hanging fruit of things which should be a certain way, and they're obviously not. The I chatted with Joe Dolson, who is very much into accessibility on the web, and he was saying that uh, he feels that that will increase. There will be lawsuits drawn up, uh, perhaps somewhat disingenuously, but in the end, the the fact that these lawsuits are beginning to happen will make us more aware of this as a thing. So although I don't like the idea of ambulance chasing lawyers, the the idea is that maybe two or three years down, we've become so habituated to, um, to, to making it part of our builds that it's just habit. And, you know, those tools yeah. that you just mentioned, Gabriella, are common to everybody. Yeah. Uh, Mark's, <laughs> hello, Mark. Mark Westgard. Uh, <laughs> he's only just tuning. Yes, you are seeing double. There is a second Nathan Wrigley and... Uh, frankly, she's far better at being me than I am. <laughs> it's really hard yeah. to tell us apart. Yeah, it's so similar. <laughs> uh, calling it usability rather than accessibility for scoring mm -hmm. might help, though, with those afraid or otherwise not interested in accessibility. It's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. Usability, yeah. accessibility, usability. I'm trying to work, juggle in my mind if I prefer one or the other. But, yeah, anyway, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else to add to that or should we crack on? Keep going. Okay, let's crack on. Um, regular listener to this show is a chap that just lives down the road from me, uh, Elliot Sowersby. Uh, he lives in Bridlington, which is about a 20-minute drive. And uh, it was really nice, actually. I needed to go to Bridlington to go to the hospital the other day, and I had no idea how to get there or what the car parking situation was like. So guess what I did? I uh, tweeted Elliot and said, what's the car parking like? And it, was, it was really great. It was immediately forthcoming. So anyway, the WordPress community in the real world. He's got a new plugin, which he asked if I could mention. I'm more than happy to. Uh, he goes by RelyWP. That's his uh that's his website. And Mark was on the show the other day, Mark Westgar from WS Form that we've just mentioned. He has built this into his own plugin solution. Uh, he's got WS Form, the form solution. But it's a simple Cloudflare turnstile. Now, Mark, put in the comments if I say any of this wrong, please. But Cloudflare turnstile is a bit like ReCapture, Google's ReCapture, in that it uh, enables you to put in the way of form submissions, an obstacle which the users have to go through. I mean, we've seen the um, which one of these is a sheep. Uh, can you see a motorbike in any of these pictures? Or and it gets more and more ludicrous to the point where, in some on some occasions, I genuinely have no idea what I'm doing. Um, there's also invisible recapture, but I'm not entirely sure how that works. But Cloudflare have come up with their alternative. And so Elliot has decided he's going to build a free plugin. And he said in the comment to me, it will always be free. And he doesn't yes. intend to have any kind of like, you know, upsell-y thing. So hat tip there, bravo. Uh, and it can protect forms such as your login form, registration form, reset forms, all of the, you know, normal WordPressy stuff, mm -hmm. comment forms. But also uh, it will protect your checkout form uh, in WooCommerce, um, and so on and so forth. It works with the following form plugins, WP form, Fluent forms, Contact form 7, Gravity forms, Formidable forms. I suspect he didn't put WS form in because Mark's already done it. And then it also supports other things like Elementor, Pro forms, MailChimp, uh, and various other things like BodyPress. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of work, Elliot. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate it. I know Elliot was with us at the beginning of the show. I don't know if he's still with us. Watching or not, I like, suspect he's had to go to the. He's probably had to go to the hospital in Bridlington. That's where, that's yeah. where all the cool stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but thank you. I just think that's really nice. I confess, I don't know what would make the Cloudflare solution superior or more desirable than the Google solution. I don't know if it implements things in a sort of slightly different way. Oh, he says he's still here. Look, there he is. Yay, he is. Elliot. Why is why is um, why is capture done through Cloudflare 
a, a good idea as opposed to Google's recapture? Is there some metric that we just don't know about? I'd be interested to know what your thoughts are on that. Maybe maybe one of you three knows. I don't know. I, I think some people just don't like a uh, over-reliance on one vendor services. Uh, it took me ages to realize that CAPTCHA was a thing outside of Google's reCAPTCHA implementation. Yes. Yeah, there's there's one called H Capture, I believe, as well, which offers a sort of similar service. Is there any, um, I don't know if there's any sort of GDPR stuff here as well. Does it phone home and send data? I don't I have no idea, to be honest, but uh, Elliot, let us know. But bravo. It is called Simple Cloudflare Turnstile. It's there. It's free. It's available uh, right now. So go and grab it if you fancy something along those lines. Okie doke. Right. Okay. I think we've ended the WordPress stuff, if that's all right with you guys. We've still got half an hour. So I just, I want you to watch this video. I'm so sorry to anybody who's listening. Um, every so often you come across something on the internet and you, you watch it and you just think, what, what just happened? This is so cool. Did any of you guys watch this yet? Uh, just with you at the beginning before we started. Okay, so I'm just going to describe it, right? So it's a video where somebody's on a mobile phone and you can basically see an image um, and it looks like a, I don't know, it looks like a, some sort of space agey sort of thing, mm -hmm. but I'm going to click play and just watch what goes on. Check this out. Right. So she essentially, uh, I think it's a, a, he, um, starts to pinch to zoom and goes in and goes into a picture, a tiny little picture in that frame and then just keeps going. And in that picture frame, there's a whole nother world. And then in that other world, you keep zooming and you find a train, a tiny train. And then inside the train is a camera. In the lens of the camera is another world. And then inside that <laughs> other world, right mysteriously on this island, miles away oh, from anywhere, is like a little temple. And if you zoom into one of the windows in the temple, there's like a, a picture on a wall somewhere. And if you go into that picture on the wall, there's a lady holding a book or something and then if you go into there it's like an ocean scene and what the heck <laughs> it just keeps going isn't that amazing mm -hmm. don't you think that's cool i just think that's absolutely phenomenal um gabriel's put a link in my little show notes here is that a similar kind of thing yeah it just so happened this person was nominated for uh one of the jamstack awards for best personal website and uh, she did the exact same thing in CSS as as her web page. Uh, it says it says oh. to me, I'm I'm trying to view it, and it says, "Hey, resize your browser." Um, but I can't. <laughs> That's really not how it's supposed to look. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it, it was a Lynn Lynn and Lynn and tonic. What a great. Uh, a great URL. I can't look at that one, I'm afraid. But I will post it in the in the show notes and anybody that yeah. wants to see it. Anyway, but for anyone thought, that's not you, if, it's actually a really neat uh, really neat. Yeah, page. if you if you resize the browser, it does the same thing. In other words. Oh. Very cool. And you can oh, use so your, can um, can are you guys getting a good experience with that then? Can you see something that I can't see? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it may be that I'm using Brave and there's all these sort of other things. Let me just try. I, I don't want to really... resize it. You know what oh, I mean? No. You drag. Yeah. Let me try. Let me read. <gasps> there you go. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's have a look. Right. So, what do we do? Do can I do I pinch? <laughs> what well, it's, it's you gotta you gotta literally resize the browser. Oh, yeah, I think you can use Zoom. <gasps> <gasps> no, <laughs> that is so cool. Oh, that's genius. So basically the, the yeah. operation of resizing the browser has the Does same. The I mean, it's not quite as deep, is it? It's not going to the kind of level that, that we had a minute ago. Oh, my Lord. Is that as far as it goes? <gasps> that is astonishing. Wow. CSS is awesome. There you go. <laughs> that's the beginning, is it? Okay. Oh, I see. I... Got in halfway through. I got to about here, didn't I? Uh, mm -hmm. That is absolutely phenomenal. Isn't it scary how clever some people are? Man alive, that's good. Okay. Yeah. What a, what a bunch of genius. Uh, Elliot's come back in and given us some commentary about his plugin. Let's see what he says. Ugh. Yeah. Um, this is what I thought it was. It's, you don't actually have to complete a CAPTCHA. 
with the turnstiles. So he says, is, in Cloudflare's yeah. own words, turnstile confirms they are real with no visual puzzle, totally transparent. Okay, so you don't have to click buttons and say this is a plane or what have right. you. That's good to know. Turnstile always preserves the privacy of web visitors on your site without sacrificing effectiveness. Unlike other capture options, we never harvest data for ad retargeting. Okay, so maybe there's the maybe there's the pitch yeah. about it. Um, thank you for letting us know. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, great. Right. What do we all think about um, <laughs> what do we all think about Twitter this week? That's going to be the basis of the next five minutes or so. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but uh, there's this fairly wealthy chap apparently called um, Elon mm -hmm. Musk. And he decided this week that he was going to spend something along the lines of $44 billion, which is, my understanding is, that's quite a lot of money. Um, and he was going to buy a social network and he chose Twitter. Uh, and the controversy goes on. We all know the controversy. We've heard about this. This is an article on The Verge called Welcome to Hell, Elon, uh, where article. they lay out, lay out the case why it's not going to be as easy as uh, basically hiring a bunch of engineers, the, the principle being that on owning a social network and running a social network is about the, the frailties and weirdnesses of humans as much as it is about having a platform and dealing mm -hmm. with the well, the rage and the hate and the controversy and all of the things which end up on a social network. Um, I'm going to just put my hat into the ring here and just say if, if, this, if this thing troubles you um, and you think, I don't really, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with Twitter in the future, uh, may I suggest that you look at something called Mastodon? Um, it's an open federated uh, social network. You can find it if you just Google Mastodon. About a year ago, so long before um, Elon decided that he was going to purchase Twitter, I, I was starting to have thoughts around this anyway. I wasn't quite sure I wanted to be advertised that quite so heavily, and I wasn't so sure that I really liked the algorithmic way my feed was pushed to me. And I really had no conception of how stuff ever got there anyway. Mastodon is a bit different in that it's everything's chronological. So rewind to like 2009 with Twitter. Uh, what you see is what was most recent. Recent is at the top. Scroll back. So if you if you haven't used Mastodon for 36 hours, you know that if you stop scrolling at 36 hours, you've seen everything that you would need to see. Uh, so I have an install of it. I would just like to say that you don't need to come to my install. You can go to all the other different installs, but the install that I've got, um, the intention would be that it, we would keep the conversation around WordPress, right? It makes sense. You can find it at wpbuilds.social. Let me say that one more time. wpbuilds.social, which is a URL, strangely. I didn't realize you could get a .social until I bought it. Um, and you can sign up there and it's free. I'm going to keep this service going for as long as people would like to make use of it. But I just thought I'd just show you what the experience looks like. So this is it. This is Mastodon. Um, I've taken away the stuff, which is private messages, but you can, it's a, can you see, it looks a bit like, what, what did you call it? Tweet deck or something. Yes. Is it tweet, tweet deck? deck. So mm -hmm. there's an option to have it as in this way where you've got different columns and various things. So you can bookmark things. You can have a home. Uh, feed here which is showing all of the things from people that I follow uh, in order and in order to follow somebody if you don't follow them already uh, let me see if I can find an example basically next to people is a little icon with a plus and you just click the button and you begin following them notifications appear in a column you can move them to the left and move them to the right as you might expect and then this is everything that's happening on my instance of Mastodon so this is the local timeline, and you can see that it's me, and look, there's Bob um, and Gina and various other people and Anne. So this is, all the, this is all the public stuff on the local timeline. This is the federated timeline. So this is all of the other um, Mastodon installs that I've federated to, and you federate by just basically following them. So I don't know where these come from. This is, uh, this is one called wandering.shop. Somebody set up a Mastodon install called wandering.shop. But there's absolutely loads of them. This one's called mastodon.social. I think that's probably the biggest one, the most popular one. And they all interoperate. Uh, so if you fancied setting one of these up for yourself, you don't have to federate with anybody else. You could just have it as a closed box. 
um, and just have conversations with people who joined it. So you could set it up for your family or your business and nobody could join if you chose not to allow them in. Uh, the other option is if you go into preferences, you can turn off that kind of interface and save it. And then you can go back and it looks a lot more like Twitter. I mean, it really does look a, quite a lot like Twitter, doesn't it? And it's just, there it is. It's one thing after another. It's got a few nice little features. For a start, there's a 500 um, character text limit. That's quite nice. Uh, if you upload an image, you can add um, accessibility related things. You can add um, you know, metadata to it. You can also have it so that images are not shown by default. They're kind of blurred out. So if you're writing something that you believe might be sensitive to other people, you can blur the image out, uh, and then somebody has to click on it to engage it. Um, and you can also decide how you want it to be listed, to followers only, mention people only, and so on and so forth. It, it, I just really like it. Um, I imagine most people are not as concerned as I am about, about things like Elon Musk taking over Twitter, but it's just a nice option out there if you fancy joining this one. What are your thoughts on this? I know, Michelle, you're sticking around on Twitter, aren't you? You're really happy. At least, it, so. well, I mean, at least for now, right? So I think w one of the things to remember is it's, in it's interesting where you want to be as an individual, but remember that an entire ecosystem is also using Twitter right now. So where are your customers? So even if you you know, don't like the way things are going, but all of your customers are there. Do you stay there so that you can still continue to reach your customers through your, maybe not my personal Twitter, but through my business Twitter accounts. And so, you know, adopting an, adopting a new platform like Mastodon doesn't necessarily mean you've left the old one right away because you have to figure out where people are migrating to and meet your customers where they are. So it's not a cut and dry in a lot of yeah. respects. It's quite interesting. So here's a chap who... Uh who works with WordPress a bit. He works for the UK, uh, I think it's the Ministry of Defense. He's called Kev Quirk, uh, and he's got a CSS framework, and he's, he's very giving. He's got a, an instance called Fosterdon, FOSS as in free open source software. And, and he over there, really amazing. If you see on the screen here, he's got 19,000 followers um, over on Mastodon. And I actually thought those kind of numbers couldn't exist yet on Mastodon. I'm sure that there's people who have lots less, uh, sorry, significantly less. There's probably a bunch of people who have significantly more. But it did kind of make me think, actually, do you know what? Maybe this has got legs. Maybe there is a, a sort of groundswell. The guy who uh, is the lead architect of the platform, which, again, is free and open source, is called Eugene. And he has said that over the last few days, I think they were on something like 50 or 60,000 new signups uh, per day. And as a result of that, his instance of Mastodon, which is, which is I believe, mastodon.social, he's having to get a load of new hardware and pay for some new hardware because of the, you know, the burden of the server being pinged quite as much as it is. But um, yeah, what do you think, Daniel? I, I, for me, it's kind of a wait and see, you mm. know? see what happens um part of you know the the, the 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 appeal of doing mastodon is that we can start over um i don't know if you're getting away from whatever you might be trying to leave on twitter though so it, it all depends you know to me on a lot of the things that 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 are concerning on twitter are more around the um kind of the you know looking at the content and having making sure that you know the right folks are are getting flagged for what they're putting up and stuff like that yeah yeah what about you um gabriel have you any thoughts on this do you do much yeah. social if so i i don't really do much social these days um as as michelle can probably tell you <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's always like did you get that thing i tweeted and i'm like oh yeah, you'll like that. Um, but I, I think this is kind of neat. Um, you know, it's, it's like I like the idea of having more of a democratized approach to social media, um, and and I like how um, you know for people who do kind of want their own network, there's still a way to federate with a larger community with this. Uh, but it also just seems like you're trading out one set of problems for another, and also like you know like. It, the traffic thing is interesting. Like, you know, if, if you think of this, if it ever gets close to the scale of Twitter, even circa, you know, 2010, and you're running a local server, 
and you're pulling in federated data from other servers, like do you sudden does everyone suddenly have to run like an entire farm of servers to power their own network just to handle the integration with other sites? Like those are the kinds of questions that come up for me. Yeah. And I guess um, the the answer would simply be it scales, doesn't it? You know, it's a bit like a successful WordPress site. You're gonna you wouldn't really want to put that on affordable hosting, yeah. um, as you know the sites that you build, you know, Rolling Stone and Billboard and so on. They're probably on it's like kind of bulletproof hosting that can consume the amount of requests that come their way. The same would be true of this. I've just got it on a really simple budget host because it doesn't really need any more than that. Um, but the thing that I like is that there's no algorithm on the on the feed. It's just chronological. And, and I've discovered that that's really cool because it just shows me what I'm anticipating to be shown. You know, there's no like, how did that get there? And the other big thing is it's, com it's obviously completely ad free. And, you know, that to me is quite a big bonus of it as well. I've not got like this every fourth or third post or whatever it might be. Is is that sponsored? Was that a sponsored thing I just saw? I can't. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, it was sponsored. Uh, all of that's gone, and I and for that reason, I I really like it. The other thing is um, the the only thing my understanding the only thing that's searchable is hashtags. Uh, so if you want to search things, the only thing that you can search for is hashtags. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but somebody told me that was the case. But uh, anyway, yeah, it's uh, it's cool. Uh, Bob says, Bob WP says it was a small amount. Oh, is this your, is this your Twitter uh, exodus? But increasing, interesting, my unfollowers were up this morning. 18 out of 22 actually closed their account. Ooh, wow. Okay. Small amount in relation to my number of followers, but more than usual. So 22 people that you, that were following you just a few days ago have actually left Twitter on a permanent basis. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm not kind of there yet. There's also interesting to know there's a bunch of cross-posting tools which are freely available online. So if you post on Twitter or in Mastodon immediately, and I really do mean like within a second, then it's been put onto the other network. So you can kind of do double duty there if you want to stay on uh, Twitter, um, but you fancy doing the interface in Mastodon, you can do it that way around as well. So yeah, there you go. Some weird kind of... Uh, phrases instead of tweeting you toot which sounds a bit ruder if you ask me it but does. <laughs> yeah but it's the elephant analogy you know mastered on like yeah anyway there we go uh righty 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 i've got one more piece and then it's probably time to knock it on the head and that is to say that pig vomit I'm never going to say that sentence ever again, am I? Uh, pig vomit toxin is the key to Martian meteorite mystery. What more is there to say? Turns out that uh, a while ago, quite a long time ago, about 100 years ago, a meteor fell from outer space, right? And uh, it was picked up and sent into a university, and I quote, by a black student who witnessed it. Um, ever since then, nobody's been able to figure out who the person was who handed it in <laughs> until the intrepid. Where is she? Oh, where's she gone? There she is. The intrepid Dr. Ayn O'Brien uh, decided to take small chunks out of the meteorite and uh, and have a look uh, at what was inside of it. And <laughs> you can't make it up, can you? Uh, yeah. It turns out that a toxin which uh, makes pigs vomit uh, was present on the meteorite. So she determined from that that it must have been in some kind of like riverbed or something, a, a time mm -hmm. when this toxin was highly, highly, you know, just in the environment. There were two or three dates when this disease, this pig vomiting <laughs> disease uh, occurred. So from that information, she was able to narrow it down to these four fine people. Mm -hmm. These are, it's got to be one of four, she reckons. So there you go, a bit of a uh, bit of Sherlock Holmes sleuthing. <laughs> you just <laughs> never around. know, do you? You just never know. That's right. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting. Have any of you guys got a pick of the week, or should we knock it on the head? <sighs> Nothing that rivals pig vomit. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, nobody was nobody <laughs> was going to be able to eclipse that one. Let's be. No. Uh, have you got any plans for Halloween? Do you do anything special where you are in the UK? It's really not that. But it's like for. Little tiny kids. The adults don't really get involved, I don't think. I'm just going to, you know, greet greet the children at the door dressed as you to give them candy. 
I was going to ask you, Michelle, how long is that? Like, is that outfit coming off the minute this is finished recording? Or my, or... my head, <laughs> I am so itchy right now. It's all I, I can do not to be I like was... scratching like a dog with <laughs> fleas. Yeah, I was going to wonder if we could have like a, a, a Twitter feed for the rest of the day of Michelle going about her day dressed as me. <laughs> Very un- well, the problem is my challenge of the day is that I am in meetings straight after this right until 2.30. So while I can lose the wig, I am still going to have 5 o'clock shadow most of the day. But, you know, Michelle, all I can say is at least you can stop looking like me. I... I have to maintain the look for the rest of my life, sadly. So it was a very, very... A very funny I joke offer- by Winston Churchill. I won't say it now because it's a bit inappropriate, but it was something along those lines. You know. Well, my offer to you, Nathan, is if you if your wife would like this wig or your children, I'm happy to send it along so they too can look like you. <laughs> no, 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 no. But that's very kind. Thank you. The, the... Oh wait, we could auction it off for. Oh, no, no, come on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Value one US cent. Let's start the bidding there, and I'll buy it because we know that's as high as it's going to go. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, anything happening to you uh, today or this week, Daniel or Gabriel? Have you got any plans? Anything you want to share? No. After that, after that website launch for Pinals.gov, I'm <laughs> trying to back to reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just whoo, take a take a sit down. Gabriel, anything happening for you I'm this just, week? Uh, looking forward to handing out candy tonight. Oh <laughs> yeah, but the, yeah that, we, that's my big plan for the week. <laughs> yeah. So does 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 anybody do treating? Sorry, tricking. Is that still a thing? Uh, do people actually carry that out? And and does it get to the point where you know things get broken and damages done to property and stuff like that? Because that was that was kind of a bit of what ha- got happening in the UK. Is that I mean, if you said trick belts. <laughs> there was quite a lot of damage that got done and so you know mm. maybe if you pr- broken pumpkins and if you're a particularly evil person you may wake up tomorrow morning with toilet paper in your trees but oh I, okay yeah. yeah i haven't yeah. seen too much of that in the year in the f- recent years so well the, the trick the trick is to just <laughs> fill up on sweets isn't it and have a boat boatload of them uh by the door and then you avoid all of that kind of stuff yeah okay well thank you so much for joining us i really appreciate it thanks to everybody who made a comment uh really appreciate it It was lots of you today that was really nice we'll be back next week uh i don't know who it is off the top of my head but we'll have one of our co-hosts but also some fine wordpressy guests so thank you to daniel schultzmith thank you to uh, gabrielle cohen and thank you to nathan wrigley uh, um, aka Michelle Frechette. That was genuinely hysterically funny. I really appreciate it. Now, just before yes. we go, right, we have to do this little yeah. wave thing. Daniel, uh, sorry, Gab- Gabriel, I'm really sorry about this. If we didn't, you didn't get warm. Um, <laughs> essentially, we we all wave, and I use it as the album art. But wait for it, right? I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> Right, so what I was thinking was, could I'm we too all... too short! Could, yeah, so, yeah, that's it. Could we all now align your head perfectly and give us a wave there? <laughs> and now your humiliation is complete. Thank you so much. We'll be back next week. Take it easy. Bye-bye.